the Oilers taking on the Canucks. And for the Oilers, it was a decisive game six victory that brought them to this point. Really, I think the first time in this series we've seen Edmonton be, you know, their their A level, B plus level for more than a 10, 15 minute stretch. The Oilers looked very good. Let's maybe start with the offense. Connor McDavid woke up in this one. They got five 5v5 five five goals as well. There were a handful of reasons to be to feel optimistic walking out of game seven if you're an Oilers fan. Yeah, that's the first game all series long that the Oilers had a convincing start to finish win. And it was it felt more like what the Oilers did instead of what the Canucks didn't do. They found a way to take it to them um, after kind of feeling each other out in an elimination game through the first 20 minutes. And that is the most positive sign that on a night when the Oilers didn't or couldn't rely on their power play, despite plenty of opportunities, they find a way at five on five to get it done. And so that was by far their most special performance of the series. They hadn't been able to really string a ton together and they controlled play for a vast chunk of that game resulting in the first non one goal game that we've had so far in this series. So that's the reason to be optimistic. If you're an Oiler fan, if you're a Canucks fan, you're sitting here going, well, we didn't play great. And that happens from time to time in the playoffs, but we did keep their power play off the board for a 10th consecutive power play. We feel pretty good about the way that we've made adjustments from game to game in this series. Rick Tockett has had the golden touch, whether it's, lineup changes, whether it's scheme, whether it's, you know, pure aggression that they've injected to varying points of their, uh, their structure. And it's really paid off in a big, big way. So, um, if you're a Canucks fan, um, there's plenty of reasons to feel optimistic as well. Maybe even feeling like you're the team that is playing with house money. I mean, let's go big picture perspective here. I was here in Vancouver for training camp in September and Jim Rutherford said, quote, we can be a playoff team if everything goes right. Tonight, game seven, they have a chance to end the Edmonton Oilers season who came in as a true bona fide Stanley Cup contender. And they've picked and pulled at the thread that's been the Edmonton Oilers all season long, starting with an 8-1 thrashing. Tyler, I wrote about this this morning on dailyfaceoff.com. 196 days ago, November 6th, in Vancouver, the Canucks beat the Oilers 6-2. Jay Woodcroft was thrown out of the game with six minutes left. The next day, Jack Campbell was put on waivers, never to be seen in an Oilers uniform again this season. Woodcroft didn't survive the week. The Oilers began their turnaround after that, but it's been the Canucks who were, they beat the Oilers three times in the first 27 days of the season and can now finish the season with a win tonight, 8-3. and three indisputable, unquestionable eight and three. There's been a lot to unpack as to how we got to this point, but the Oilers can also vanquish those Vancouver demons with one game once and for all. I was on with our friends at uh, morning cup of hockey this morning, Johnny and Colby and Johnny maybe trying to get under my skin a little bit, but he said tonight is a lose lose for the Edmonton Oilers. Either you go and you win or sorry, you lose this game and it's what a wasted season, what a wasted opportunity. And he said, but if you win, it doesn't count because it's no Demko and no Brock Besser for the Vancouver Canucks. I think it's an insane narrative from Johnny, but this is a big opportunity for the Oilers because of how shorthanded the Canucks are. Let's maybe go over to the Barack Besser news. Frank, you had an update on that this morning. Like the timing of it is brutal. The the injury or the the blood clotting itself is just a terrible thing to hear about a player. And it's it's a shame and a brutal break for the Canucks. And we obviously send our best to Besser. Horrible timing. Um, there's no good timing for a blood clot, but when you are not only your team's leading scorer in the playoffs with seven goals, but you've been a certified Edmonton Oiler killer this season with nine goals in the 10 games that you've played, man, that hurts. And so the blood clot sources say developed in his leg doctors and team medical staff found it after game six. Um, honestly, I wonder if that had anything to do at all with Besser's performance in game six, because he really struggled. And he began a blood thinning medication sometime in the last 48 hours. And he's expected to be out of game action for at least three months, sources say. So that effectively ends his season. 
Really tough spot for the Canucks. And you're right. If from an Oilers perspective, you're playing a team's third goalie over a seven-game series. You have to win, period, end of story. And not only that, but I think from a grand, again, 30,000-foot view, and we'll have plenty of time to unpack whichever way this goes, the Oilers are sitting in a spot where, compared to the Rangers, compared to the Dallas Stars, compared to some of the other best teams in the league, even the Florida Panthers, this was by far the most preferable path of any team to the conference final. And if you're not able to get there in a season in which, let's rewind again back to September, Leon Dreisaitl said, quote, cup or bust. This is it. This is You put it all on the line here to give yourself a puncher's chance against the Dallas Stars who will come into that series in the Western Conference Final as the favorite against either one of these teams. There's, again, so much on the line. Yeah, it's it's game seven and and the wild and the beautiful thing about game sevens is a goalpost, a missed net, one big save, one big moment like it can define your season. And if you're the Oilers, you sit there and go, man, it could define the Connor McDavid era in Edmonton. If you if you let this opportunity slip past you tonight. So there is a lot on the line. I don't think I'm you know speaking in hyperbole or anything when I say that this is a defining moment in Connor McDavid's career and this era for the Edmonton Oilers. I if you're asking Frank, I think they're facing the most pressure tonight. I know you said there's an argument for both and obviously a game seven on home ice with this kind of a season. But if the Canucks lose, I think the Canucks fans can sit there and say, massive building block for us in terms of becoming a legitimate Stanley Cup contender. And hey, missing our best goalie, missing our best player, Quinn Hughes, who knows if he's actually healthy. Like, I, I think there's enough there if you're yeah. Canucks fans to maybe feel okay with a loss. I Why? Know. I mean, you you had leads of one nothing, 2-1, to one, and 3-2 in this series. The fact that you couldn't step on the Oilers' throats, even with... Arthur Shilov's in net, even with some of those other things you're talking about, like you finished five points ahead of the Oilers in the standings. Mm -hmm. You could say whatever you want about who's the better team, who's the underdog, this or that. Five points ahead, home ice advantage, three different times having a lead in the series, and you can't win. I, and you come into this having kind of, I think they had their opportunity to take a kill shot in game six and missed. Like I look at that and say, I think the pressure is equally divided going into this game seven. Going to be a fun one tonight out in Vancouver. Frank will have coverage on dailyfaceoff.com. What's up, hockey fans? If you enjoyed that video, then you need to be hitting the subscribe button right here at Daily Faceoff. Exclusive interviews and analysis from our hockey insider, Frank Saravalli, fantasy updates from Brock Sagan, and a daily live show at noon Eastern, Monday through Friday. You don't want to miss any of the fantastic content, so hit that subscribe button.